name is Linda Jo Martin and I am known on booktube as the book lady. This is a book acquisitions video. In my last video I mentioned that my home burned down in the Slater fire on the 8th, the evening of the 8th of September, not too long ago, and I'm evacuated to Wairika, California, where I'm staying in a hotel thanks to the Red Cross. And what do I do while I'm evacuated? Since most of my book collection burned in the fire, I'm sorry to say I did manage to get some of them. I got some of my books out, but not all of them, and I regret that very, very much. So I've been going to secondhand stores and buying books and going to the library, and I also got some books that I had on order when the fire happened. So I'm just going to start there and tell you about all the books that I've acquired in the month of September. So when the fire started, I had these books. Okay, hold on. I have to, I have them piled up on the table and there's just so many books over here. I have to um, get just the ones I want to talk about first. Okay, right here. I'm ready. So one of the books that I had on order, um, it's called The World Rushed In, California Gold Rush Experience by J.S. Holliday. And this was recommended by a friend, kind of. She recommended the author uh, a different book that he had written about California. And that one, for some reason, Amazon couldn't send it to me, so I ordered this one instead. And I will be reading sections and talking about it here on BookTube. That is my plan for this book. It's kind of thick. I'm really into California, so it's going to take me a long time to get through and just give me something to talk about in the months to come. you got to have a plan, right? So um, I've been reading. In fact, I'm doing a... Excuse me. I don't like it when the little uh, stickers get messed up, but that one's a little bit. So I've been doing the Newberry books. I'm actually doing a Newberry challenge for uh, this year, and I will talk about that in a different video. But the winner of the Newberry medal is New Kid. That was the winner in 2020. Really loved this book. Um, and I'm also going to be reading all the honor books. So the one that I had mentioned in my last uh, TBR video is this one, uh, Other Words for Home, which is about a Syrian refugee. Now, I want to say that um, this one is a graphic novel. It's just a lot of fun. It's written by a black author named Jerry Craft. And um, I totally love this. It has a lot of, uh, racism is a theme in this book, let's put it that way. So it seems to be a theme with the Newberry books this year, except for this one. This one is about foxes, scary stories for young foxes, and I think that would be perfect for October because, you know, scary stories, October. So I, th I had this one on order at the time that my mobile home burned down. And I just went to the library today. Hold on. I just went to the library today and I picked up this book, which is also a Newbery Honor book this year. And I believe it also won the Caldecott Medal, which is for the illustrations. Now this one is a picture book and I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to actually buy this one because it's only a few pages, but the pictures in here are just amazing. I mean, I am totally blown away by the talent of this artist. So I think this would be worth buying just to get the artwork in it. And uh, beautiful, beautiful book. And it didn't take me long to read, like about five minutes, but I really do like it. So, um, Back to what I had on order at the time that my mobile home burned down. 
I had this one, I had forgotten that I ordered this one, The Harbinger 2, The Return by Jonathan Kahn. He is a Jewish Christian, or Messianic Christian, I guess you would call him. And he wrote another book called The Harbinger, which I read quite a few years ago. Fascinating. I should probably discuss that in a different video, but this is, I think, one of his most recent books, and I'm looking forward to reading that. More that I had on order. I have decided to read Gentlemen in Moscow as part of the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. And it's a nice thick book, but uh, had it on order. Really grateful to have it. And the last book that I had on order at that time was The Divine Comedy. It's because I'm doing this classic book list that is on my website. It's been on my website for about 10 years, and I decided that I needed to read more of them, so I was using a random number generator, and it chose number 18, which was The Inferno by Dante Alighieri. And I thought it was really ironic that I had The Inferno on order at the time that my home was destroyed by a seriously vile inferno that took away a lot of homes of the people of my little town. So I also got cliff notes to go with it so that I can understand it better. And that was a suggestion that Faith gave me. I guess she recently read Dante and was going to help me to know what I needed to do, which is to get the notes and get a good translation going. So I have a lot of other books. Okay, right before the fire, I had a few books that I had received and I did grab them on the way out the door when I was evacuated. One of them is Angle of Repose and this is a Pulitzer Prize winner. It was a winner in 1972 and the reason I bought this book is because I was reading last month when I went to Idaho, I was reading that little historical book about the state parks of Idaho and it mentioned this and it was, it is about somebody who is, I think, in California, but he's writing about his parents or childhood home or something in Idaho. So I thought that was kind of cool that it was a book about both California and Idaho. Um, so I decided I have to read this one, and I do want to read all the Pulitzer Prize winning books, which I haven't read very many, but I, you know, here's one. Hopefully I will be able to get to that sometime within the next year. I have no current plans to read it, but I wanted to get a copy. Now the other two books that I got uh, right before the fire were these are um, from the Newberry Medal List. Well, I have a thing about the Newberry Medal List. I know it's for kids, but I do write children's literature. And so I like to read children's literature. And I've had it in my heart for many years to collect all the books on the Newberry List, which unfortunately I gave a lot of them away when I moved in 2013. Let's not go there. It's a sad memory for me. But... Uh, so I thought, well, I'm living in this mobile home now. I have my own home. I'm going to start collecting them again. And uh, so I made an order. Of course, my mobile home burned down. So now I don't have that feelings of security where I can collect books. But I don't know. We'll see what the future brings. So the first book that I got, which is a Newbery Medal winner from 1932, it's called Waterless Mountain by Laura Adams Armour. And this book, I've wanted to read this one for years. It is a book about Native Americans. And the other book that I got is Turtle in Paradise, which is a Newbery Honor book from 2011. So those were the ones that I ordered right before the fire. And continuing on, what all do I have here? Okay, so after the fire, I realized we have, uh, in Happy Camp, we had a publisher called Naturegraph, and I realized that since Naturegraph burned, um, tragic but true, 
The, the Nature Graph books are probably going to be in short supply in the future because that's where they were printed and that's, that's where everything was. Her book supplies that she was sending out to people for years and years and years. So tragically that all burned. So if you want some Nature Graph books, this is a good time to get them. And I had a couple of very special books that I wanted to replace. And that is uh, Dear Madam, love this book. I've loved it for many years. It's a memoir about a woman who was living in the Klamath River Valley back in the 1940s on her mining claim. And this is just like a revered book in our area. And this is Dear Madam, Who Was She?, which is more recently published, but it, this is like a biography of the author of Dear Madam. And then I also bought a copy of Karuk, the Upriver People. This is the local Native American tribe that inhabits Happy Camp where I was living. It's like, mm, I would say about half the people in Happy Camp are related to this tribe. So it's really important in our culture there. And so I wanted to get this book before it became unavailable. And the last book that I bought wasn't from Nature Graph, but it's another book about the Karuk tribe and uh, the history of um, the Klamath River Valley. This is called the Land of, In the Land of the Grasshopper Song, another very revered book in our area. So I got those after the fire because uh, I needed to replace them. They're just books that I didn't want to do without. Now, I've been going to the Red Cross Center and I saw a table full of children's books that they had there, which I thought was really sweet. And there was this one book that I just couldn't pass up and I kept thinking, oh, I love that book. And finally, they said, take the book. And it's Charlotte's Web, which actually was a Newbery honor book in 1953. And of course, a very loved book. They actually had a box full of copies of this book to give away to people. So the fact that I took one didn't deprive any of the other children that wanted them. And let's see, what should I talk about next? So many books. Okay, so this I've been going to secondhand stores. Hold on a minute. I'm going to organize myself better over here. I already talked about that one. Um, they were giving away things, actually, at the Red Cross Center. They were giving away clothing and books and all kinds of things. So I went there and looked through their boxes and they had a box with a few books in it. So I, of course, had to get the books. Not all of them, I left some for other people. They had a copy of Catherine called Birdie, which was a Newbery Honor book in 1995. And White Fang by Jack London. Um, couldn't pass it up. You know, it's a classic. Jack London was from Oakland, California, where I was born. And I've read a lot of his books and wouldn't mind reading White Fang again. So, um, and they also had a lot of Louis L'Amour books. So I have never read a Louis L'Amour book. My grandmother used to read them. And this is The Haunted Mesa. So I thought I'd give that a try and see what it was like. And the last thing that I saw was a coloring book. I've never actually owned one of these adult coloring books before, but it's Color the Gospels and I just couldn't pass it up. Thought I might even give coloring a try. Why not? I might even have time for it. And then I went to a little bookstore down the street. This is Zephyr Books. They have a little coffee book bar in there and they've got books and she had some boxes at the front that said children's books uh, free to anyone who was a refugee from the fire so I looked through the books and did not find any Newbery books but I did find this which is Mark Twain by the Riverside it's just quotations from Mark Twain that I thought would be interesting to read so she gave me that and then I went to the back of her store where she actually had her collection of children's books for sale. And there were a lot of Newbery books back there, but it was all a little bit pricey. But I did find one book that I couldn't pass up. 
and it's because it was on my TBR list a couple of years ago for the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, and it's one of those books I never got to. We were supposed to read a book and its prequel, and I just I chose uh, to read Anne of Green Gables and the prequel. Well, I read Anne of Green Gables that year, but I never read the prequel, which is called Before Green Gables, and now I have a copy, so I'm very happy about that. So that's all I got from Zephyr Books. Now, I went to a secondhand store. Hold on. I went to, I think it was, uh, I'm not even going to tell you the name of it because I've already forgotten. Something about a youth ranch. It's a, um, just a secondhand store to benefit them. And I found a bunch of uh, Newberry books, even some that I have never read. This one was actually on my TBR list last year and I didn't get to it. So now I've got a copy. It is My Side of the Mountain, a Newberry Honor book in 1960. This is The Whipping Boy, a Newberry Medal winner in 1987, and I have never read this one. Kind of excited about finding a copy. Here's Misty of Chincoteague, and sorry if I just said that wrong, but um, it was a Newbery Honor book in 1948, and I have already read it. This is a very beloved book. Uh, people, children especially, have loved this book a lot over the years. And this is a Newbery uh, winner. Actually, it won the medal in 1984, and I've already read it. I really love this book. It, ha is, a, it is an epistolary novel, um, I guess excerpts from a boy's diary and he lives near Monterey, California. So it's kind of like local to me. I love the Monterey area. And I also found a copy of Abel's Island. Abel's Island was a Newbery Honor book in 1977. Never have read it before, so I'm really excited to get this. And I found a copy of the sequel to The Hiding Place by Cory Ten Boom. This is called Tramp for the Lord. I've never read it before and I couldn't pass it up. And I also found a copy of Just Ella, which is a, uh, I, I'm kind of thinking I might have read this one before. I'm not sure. It's not on the Newberry list, but it's like about, it's a Cinderella retelling. Thought I'd give that one a try. And what else do I have? So we've talked about those. Okay, the only ones I haven't talked about are these library books. So I went to the library and I got a copy of Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. And I noticed that I'm only the second person ever to check this out of the library. It's like brand new to the library. So I like newer books and so of excited that I got a copy of this to read while I'm here and I also noticed some books that they had in the back in the children's section which apparently they had uh, books that you can take and return on the honor system I guess this was maybe during COVID I don't know how long they've been doing this but their library was closed here for a long time and just recently reopened so I got this book out of that rack. It's Amos Fortune, Free Man, and it won the Newbery Medal in 1951. And I have never read it, so I'm pretty excited to be holding a copy right now. And then the other one I have never read is a Newbery Honor book from 1968 got a list down here I've been looking at so I want to read that it's the Egypt gate the Egypt game by Zilpha Keatley Snyder I have never read it and I think that's everything I think I've actually gone through all of my books that I have here and told you about them yep yep that's it that was kind of a long book acquisitions video but that is Pretty much how I've been entertaining myself during the time that I've been here in Wairika. And um, I will be making probably an end of the month video in a few days. 
and hopefully we'll be able to make more videos. I'm all set up in my hotel room for video making. I don't know how long I'm going to be in this hotel room. The sheriff's department did put something on the web on Facebook saying that we'll be able to stay here as long as we need it. And the fact is, I don't know where I'm going from here. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. So for right now, this hotel room is a real comfort and um, very much appreciate the Red Cross giving me this place. And uh, hope that eventually I'll decide whether I'm going back to Happy Camp or going someplace else. I might go to Arizona this winter. I don't know where I'm going. But I do have some things that I have to take care of, and I think I'll talk to you more about it in my uh, end of the month video. I'll make that also a life update and tell you some of what my options are. And for right now, I think I better stop talking. So this is the end of the video. I'm going to talk to you in another one. Hopefully, that is the plan.